Hi, uh, Brett Contreras here. Just want to film a quick video to talk about a couple things that I've learned in my um, my biomechanics course that I'm taking at ASU um, that I thought were interesting. The first uh, thing I want to talk about is a, about ACL biomechanics. So uh, here I kind of drew a picture. Here's the femur, this is the tibia, and here's the ACL. ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament. So the um, the proximal attachment of the ACL is on the posterior portion of the femur and the distal attachment is on the anterior portion of the femur or of the tibia sorry and the purpose is to prevent anterior translation of the tibia relative to the femur so the purpose of the ACL is to kind of hold that from uh, the tibia from gliding forward so um, as most people know, ACL injuries are very, very prominent in sports and we want to be able to, to do whatever we can do to prevent these injuries from happening. So it's important to understand the biomechanics of these injuries um, to really, you know, be able to try and train um, in strength training to try and prevent those injuries. So here's kind of a diagram that shows um, the quadriceps um, they come around and they envelop the patella and they attach um, here on the tibia. So when the quadriceps contract, you get, because it wraps over, you know, around the, the patella, this is bent, you know, with a, a leg bent at 90 degrees. So um, when the quadriceps contract, you get um, a force vector going this way. So you get like a normal component and a tangential component. Um, to the force, but it's, it's in this direction. So just having the quadriceps contract is going to pull this way and it's going to, you know, provide a anterior force on the tibia. So just having strong quads puts that ACL at risk. So what helps kind of keep the quad, you know, the, the, the quad contraction in check is the force of the hamstrings. So you'll get the hamstrings that con connect right here and they will pull uh, rearward or um, posteriorly and so when you get co-contraction of the hamstrings and quadriceps that kind of balances out and helps um, you know spare the forces on the ACL so this is just a diagram to help you understand the forces and one thing that's interesting I wrote right here the quads have a larger moment arm than the hamstrings due to the patella so the patella here kind of makes the quadriceps move forward more so there's a larger like lever length a larger moment arm of the quads so it produces more force so you know you have to have really strong hamstrings and they have to co-contract at the right time in order to spare those anterior forces um, prepared or produced by by the quadriceps so um, strong hamstrings are really important the next thing I want to talk about is here's here's an example um, where the femur and the tibia are in line with it, one another and I wanted to show how landing can tear the ACL because see how the tibia is angled downward just a little bit as you land this femur will want to slide down this way in this direction because of the tibia is angled downward so that's how landing can tear the ACL because you would think you know that landing is just like this but no it's not because the tibia is angled downward it wants to slide this way so you get that anterior translation with landing so basically what does all this mean you want coactivation of the quads and hamstrings um, there's some research that shows that women um, don't have as good of coactivation as men their hamstrings are a little bit delayed um, but you want to you want to try and get those hamstrings to co-activate and to get strong all right you want strong hamstrings as both hip extensors and knee flexors so you don't just want to train one roll or the other you want to train them in, in both patterns and you want strong glutes and the glutes have three primary roles hip extensors hip abductors and hip external rotators and the reason why strong glutes are important is not just to help out as you know as hip extensors but also the, 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 ex, the abduction and external rotation uh, strength prevents valgus collapse and valgus collapse can actually lengthen the ACL as well and, and stress the ACL. 
So, what does this all mean? What exercises are best? Think deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, glute ham raises, hip thrusts, and back extensions. Those would probably be the best exercises for um, preventing, helping prevent ACL injuries. Now, the other thing I wanted to show, this is a drawing right here of the articular cartilage on the distal femur. And there's a split line pattern um, of the articular cartilage. And this, this is kind of like what I talked about with Davis's law being very, very important. The cartilage isn't just um, directed in one uniform direction. It's directed in a manner that's going to, um, you know, distribute stress and strength. Um, if you read here, articular cartilage, it's anisotropic, which means the strength and the stiffness are distributed in a directionally dependent manner. This here, the lines of, you know, collagen and the lines of, you know, the way that the, the cartilage adapts over time is to pre prevent, you know, and distribute forces properly. So this is how soft tissue throughout the body can adapt over time depending on the loads that are placed upon it. So I found that interesting as well. So that's all I want to do, uh, just film a quick video talking about these couple things. And as I learn more in my class, I'll kind of throw stuff up like this up every once in a while. Hope you enjoyed it.